year anniversary when Israel was delivered from the hands of the Muslims. The Ottoman Tur Turk uh, Empire had Israel in its captivity for over 400 years. And in 1917, Allenby, General Allenby of England, he brought deliverance. And then it's the 70th year anniversary, how Israel signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name. This is God's plan for my life. This isn't an ordinary book. It's a supernatural book. It's a roadmap for my future. And I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can be what it says I can be. In Jesus' name. As you remain standing, please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 24. If you don't have a Bible, move over to someone who does. And you can read along with them the words of God. Matthew 24, 3. Would you say that, please? Matthew 24, 3. I want to begin reading And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. In verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Father, anoint your word with great power in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. God bless you. As you read the words of Jesus, it almost looks like you're reading from the newspaper. There will be nations that will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And you begin to see all of these things take place. And it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet. And so it's very important that we understand the days that we live in. These are the last days. Say that with me. These are the last days. In the book of Acts chapter 2, it talks about on the day of Pentecost, Peter said this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it would come to pass in the last days God would pour his spirit out on all flesh. The proper translation of that is this is the beginning of that. And so if that was the beginning of that and these are the last days, this is the ending of that. And God promised a great revival would take place before he came back that the latter house would be greater than the former house. If the former house or the church on the day of Pentecost was a number 10, then God says, we're going to go off the chart. We'll be a number 12. We'll be a number 15. We'll be able to do things that the early church could have never done. And so there is an anointing that God wants to release on every person in this room to become the people that God has called us to be. Now this year, 2017, is a very historic year. First of all, this is the year of Jubilee. Secondly, it's the 100th year anniversary when Israel was delivered from the hands of the Muslims. The Ottoman Tur Turk uh, Empire had Israel in its captivity for over 400 years. And in 1917, Allenby, General Allenby of England, he brought deliverance. 
And then it's the 70th year anniversary, how Israel became a nation. It's the 50th anniversary when the Six-Day War took place and Jerusalem was delivered from the hands of the Jordanians and the Muslims. And Jesus said, the days will come when Israel will no longer be under the rule of Gentiles. And that was fulfilled 50 years ago this year. So when we talk about not only this is the year that this happened, this is the very season of the Passover. And the first day of the Passover, which was just a little over a week ago, uh, was when Justice, um, uh, uh, the, our, our Justice was, uh, uh, what's his name, um, Gorsuch, Gorsuch was uh, confirmed, which it was almost like the death angel. He moved across our nation and he spared our nation because now there's a man who will oppose abortion and oppose some of the sins that have been, been put upon our land. And so we are living in a very strategic time which God is going to trigger something that I believe will happen this year and will happen actually in just the days ahead, and I want to share with you why. I believe that there's going to be a revival. And that revival is going to start this year, and it's going to start right in Israel. The Bible says in the book of Romans that all Israel shall be saved. Now, I don't believe that means that every soul in the nation of Israel is going to accept Christ, but it's kind of like if you went to a small town and you said, man, the whole town turned out for the ball game. Well, the whole town didn't turn out for the ball game, but they had a big crowd over there. Well, this is what's going to happen in the nation of Israel and also those countries that are influenced by Israel. Now, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, somebody say Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45, Isaiah 45 talks about Cyrus. Cyrus was a prophesied, this man who wasn't even born yet, prophesied about 400 years before his birth. Isaiah said, God is going to raise up this anointed one, Cyrus, and he's going to subdue, subdue nations, and he's going to loose the loins of kings. Say that with me. He's going to loose the loins of kings. And Cyrus was a, he was a, a mede, or he was a Kurd. Uh, there are 43 million Kurds in the world today, at one time, they, every one of them were Christians. They were called the Medes. And on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit fell, one of those 17 languages that they spoke in other tongues with was the Medes. And so those Jews came back, and these Medes were converted to Christianity. But it, when Islam took power, they went in and they beheaded the Christian leaders. They killed them by the tens of the thousands. And that's how they were converted to Islam. It wasn't through love, but it was through the sword. Well, it said Cyrus will help bring Israel back it, when they were in captivity to the, uh, to the uh, Babylonians. And so he took his daughter and he married his daughter to the king of Persia. And so the Medes and the Persians joined together. They had a million-man army. And they came in and defeated, uh, they defeated Babylon. And it happened on the night when, when Belshazzar uh, was having this big party. It was a drunken orgy. And there came this hand on the wall. And it, it wrote this, this on the wall and they brought in Daniel. And Daniel interpreted it and said, you've been found in the balance and you've been found wanting. And the Bible says that his loins were loosed. In other words, he peed in his pants. He was so afraid. And his loins were loosed. He was so afraid of what happened. And Cyrus came in and he conquered, he conquered Babylon. Well, many feel that President Trump is a type of Cyrus. 
And uh, one of the things that he has been called to do is to restore and strengthen Israel. And the Bible says here that he sub subdues nations, these rogue nations, and he looses the loins of kings. Now, when you talk about loose the loins of kings, they wore this tunic, and they wore this garb, and then they wore a belt around their waist, and in that belt they had the, their weapons. They had their swords. They had their instruments of war. And when they would come in, they would take this belt off, or they would loose their loins. That's what it meant. So it is saying that he will loose the loins. He will take and, and uh, de dethrone these rogue, these rogue leaders and these rogue di dictators. And this is why you're seeing the American Army and the American Navy in North Korea. North Korea is coming down. He's going to dethrone them. And he's going he's to dethrone Assad. And one of the things that he is going to do, he's going to begin to move the embassy of the United States over to Jerusalem. Now, back in January, after the elections, I was invited by KUFI, the Christians United for Israel, to come to Washington, D.C. I'm the director for the state of Kentucky. And while we were there, we were to go to our different congressmen and our different senators and encourage them that, that uh, Christians United for Israel wanted to, to encourage President Trump to keep his promise to move our embassy. And so John Hagee, he came to me and he said, I've never met Senator McConnell, and I would like to go with you, my wife, and the other leaders of Kufi, they went with us, and I introduced him to, um, to Mr. McConnell. And one of the things that we asked, we said, we want the embassy moved to Jerusalem. Now, there are 87 countries that recognize Israel and have their embassies there. Not one of them, however, has their embassy in Jerusalem. Now, any other nation... Your embassy is always where this, that nation's capital is, but not in Israel. It's in Tel Aviv. And the reason is because of the uproar that comes from the uh, Palestinians in the Muslim countries. And so in 1995, there was a, a bill that was passed. It was called the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995. And it gave power to the president to move our embassy to Jerusalem. But it also has a clause that as the president, because of political reasons, you can delay that moving for six months. And so every president since that time has delayed our moving of the embassy. It was the Bushes delayed it, the Clintons delayed it, and... Bush too delayed it, and President Obama delayed it. Well, Mr. Trump says, I'm not going to delay it. I'm going to move it. And so uh, Senator McConnell told us this. He said the United Nations has come uh, out with a restriction and with a, a, an attack upon Israel. And in that attack, they can absolutely bring war criminal charges to Netanyahu for simply establishing settlements on the West Bank. And there was all type of restrictions, and America has asked that those restrictions be removed. And uh, Mr. McConnell said, if they're not removed, then our recommendation to the president is to move the embassy in May. Now, May is that six-month period where the president needs to make a decision, or it's delayed for another six months. And so the UN has laughed in the face of the United States. The United States has drawn a line in the dust, and probably in the month of May, there will be an announcement that America is going to move the embassy. Are you following and you're hearing what I'm saying? Now, when that happens, all hell's going to break loose with the Palestinians. One of the things that could happen 
is they've come in and they've threatened us with our television station when there was something else that took place a couple of months ago that they were going to close us down. Well, they didn't close us down. We're preaching the gospel. We're the number one station over there amongst the Palestinians. But if they did close us down, uh, we would go to the American government and we would say because of what has happened, we feel that you need to work things out where we can open our station again, only this time in Jerusalem. And that would be a whole lot better. Somebody say amen. But whatever happens, it's going to work out for our good. But I want to share something with you now by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When that happens, when we move the embassy, there are a number of things that are going to happen. Number one, there is going to be unprecedented prosperity for the United States. God said he would bless those that bless Israel. And no country has taken a step of blessing and recognition before like this. And so I believe that it's going to be a time that our stock market soars, our property values increase, the economy just begins to move forward in an unprecedented way here in America. But secondly, and most important, it's going to spark a revival, a real move of the Holy Ghost. And where you read these, re, these uh, religiosity people who tell us that Christianity is through in the Middle East, that's all a bunch of baloney. A revival is going to be released in Israel. That which was prophesied by Paul in the book of Romans is going to take place. A move of God is going to be released here in the United States. You're going to see a new wave of the Holy Ghost and a move of God is going to take place throughout Great Britain and in Ireland and in Scotland and in England. And I want to tell you exactly why. When we talk about uh, Ireland and when you talk about the people of Israel, there's connection. And back in the 8th century, uh, there was some awesome things that were taking place. Uh, the world power in those days was the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrians were out of the country of uh, Iraq, actually Mosul, was uh, ancient Nineveh. And just as you have seen the atrocities and the murders and the killings ISIS has done there, that's that spirit that is so violent. Uh, the Assyrians were perhaps the most violent army in the history of mankind, even worse than ISIS. They have some of the friezes of the Assyrian army in the British Museum. I've been there to the British Museum. I've seen some of these. And one of the things they developed back in the 8th century before Christ was a flying machine. They made this contraption and they harnessed these eagles. And a, a, a boy probably 8 to 10 years of age, very, very lightweight, was harnessed in a little box. And they had a carrot stick. And these eagles would fly. And they were able to fly and he could direct them and they would do reconnaissance for their armies. They would tell the movement of the troops. And then when they captured people, the torture was beyond anything you could imagine. Many times they would peel the skin off of them. They would, they would cannibalize them. They would crucify them. And it was so bad that it sent fear all through the world and especially in Israel because they were hundreds and hundreds of miles from Jerusalem but it was only a matter of time before they would come and conquer uh, conquer Israel. So the Jewish people fled by the hundreds of thousands. I'm not talking about uh, eight or 10,000 people. I'm talking about entire cities were vacated and they immigrated and they migrated into parts of Europe and so when you look of France and Germany and Spain many of the foundation pieces that helped make those countries become great were really 
the Hebrews, the Israelites, and their stability of law and their stability of their faith in God. Well, during this time, there were the Phoenicians. And if you are familiar with your Bible, Jesus talked about Tyre. Tyre was the Phoenicians. They developed an alphabet which was identical to the Hebrew language. The fact is, if you talk Phoenician, you could talk Hebrew. And, and uh, it was just a, a brother-sister relationship between those people. And during the times of Solomon, the head of the, uh, uh, the Tyre, the king of Tyre, he joined his navy with the Hebrews. Now, listen, I'm not giving you a history lesson. I, I'm, I'm sharing with you how this move of God's taking place. And so they joined forces, and there were more there were 10 times more Jews than there were these Phoenicians. And they sailed. They sailed to America. They sailed around the world. And they sailed and set colonies in Ireland and in Great Britain. And so many times when you read, well, those were Phoenicians, they weren't the Phoenicians. They were the Jews. And so their ships took many of these people that were trying to get away from the Assyrians, and they settled in Ireland. And so there they set up their religious worships. And when you read about Stonehenge and you read about <clears throat> these groves of worship and these way these stones and who could have been these pagan people that set, it was the Jews. And they set them up similar to the altars that you read about in Exodus and in where Abraham set up groves and where Moses set up the rocks and pillars of 12. In almost all of these places, there are 12 pillars that are set up in their form of worship. And it was, it was Judaism, and even though it, it became uh, polluted by other ways of believing, it still was the base of, of, of Judaism. And so when you look at the Celtic language, it is related there to, to Hebrew. It's all related together. And when you take the blood and you take the DNA of many of the Irish people, it can go back to you got a little bit of Jew blood in you. You got a little bit of Hebrew in you. Are y'all following what I, I'm, I'm saying? And so when, when Joseph of Arimathea, say, raise your right hand. Say, I like this guy. I like Joseph of Arimathea. Here's what the Bible says. Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man, he was a wealthy guy. He came down and he took the body of Jesus. Remember that story? And he buried him in his tomb. Well, what happened was when that, when that took place, they came to torture him and persecute him, and he left the country, and he ended up going to Great Britain. There was already this... Uh, this transportation, there was already this railroad connection because there had been hundreds of thousands of Jews that had gone on before, and he ends up being the first Christian missionary to ever go to England. And the fact is, he set up, settled up in Glastonbury, and when he was buried, he was buried, and everyone knew Joseph of Arimathea is buried there, so when King Arthur died, King Arthur is buried there in the same cemetery of Joseph of Arimathea. Joseph gave his, his uh, tomb to a, a, the king of kings, and now all the little kings want to be buried where Joseph is buried. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Now, I say all of this because I'm building up. Come on, I, I'm, I'm landing this plane here in just a minute, but I, I want you to follow me. I'm on course. So now comes the Babylonians. The Babylonians are getting ready to take Jerusalem in 586 uh, B.C. And the prophet in the land was Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a white-headed prophet. He had an assistant by the name of Barak. He was his scribe. He did all the writing. Jeremiah never married. He knew the king. They, uh, and he began to prophesy that no, no use fighting Nebuchadnezzar. He's come here. He's going to punish us, and you need to flee. 
Well, they took Jeremiah and they threw him in the miry clay. They left him to die and the people helped deliver him. But now this is where it gets a little into the legend. And I want to share this. I had a professor in seminary who wrote the textbook, Jeremiah. It was used by most seminaries in America, and he was my professor. And I had to read that book of Jeremiah once a week. I read the whole thing once a week. I got so tired of reading Jeremiah, I could just throw up, to be honest with you. But at the end of the day, it was believed that Jeremiah, he fled Jerusalem, and he fled to Ireland. And he took with him, perhaps, the Ark of the Covenant because the Ark of the Covenant was never found when Nebuchadnezzar came in and took Jerusalem. He also took a harp. He took with him the king's daughter so a seed of David would be preserved. And he fled. And when you read early Celtic history, it talks about this white-headed man coming with his servant Barak and a princess from another land. And we believe, and history kind of comes together, that he probably went to Ireland. Now, that's not all he took. He took with him what was called Jacob's Stone, which in England they call it the Stone of Destiny. Now, let me just say about Jacob's stone. Many of you know the story about Jacob, how he fled for his life, and he fled to a place, and he made a rock a pillow, and he has this dream. Stay tuned to find out how you can get a free CD or MP3 from Bob Rogers Ministries. And so now our bodies become the temples of the Holy Ghost. We don't have to go to Jerusalem, to the temple, to hear the presence of the Lord or to hear from God. Don't be a coward when it comes to standing for righteousness and those things that are right in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to Jesus. Get this teaching completely free on CD or as an MP3 digital download when you become a partner in Holy Land Broadcasting. For just $30, you can become a broadcast partner with us as we take the gospel to the airwaves in Israel. Reaching people and changing lives is what Holy Land Broadcasting is all about. Call today and become a broadcast partner for just $30. 1-888-613-6080 or visit bobrogersministries.org and click on HLB and thank you for your support. shall be impossible to us. Nothing shall be withheld from us because we are walking uprightly before the Lord. I break generational curses. I break it in the name of Jesus Christ. May there be a change that takes place for the glory of the Lord. In Jesus' name, 